Now, if you're a regular viewer of The Gadget Show, you'll know that I have a penchant for building my own gadgets. I've built a head-up display for my car, a phone glove, a 50-quid Steadicam, a portable snow machine, and a fully working hoverboard. And this summer, we've been busy again, working on what I think is the world's most environmentally friendly rocket car. It's based on those kids' toy rockets where you get a pop bottle, you half-fill it with water, chuck a little valve in there, and then pump it up until this happens. Yay! And that got me thinking, if I was able to put enough water under enough pressure, I might be able to push myself along on a wheeled cart. The only problem was finding a container that could hold enough water and contain enough pressure. That's when I had my water cooler moment. It's genius, isn't it? You see, to you, that is just your office water supply, but to me, it's a propulsion system for a rocket car. As you probably know, most inventions start with a prototype. This was ours. Ugh. Isn't that great? I think it's a tractor that belonged to the kid of one of the cameramen. Anyway, we whacked this bottle on it, pressurised it, and this is what happened. So, initial success. We now had to decide just how much pressure we could pump into this, because obviously the more air and the more pressure and more water we've got in there, the more propulsion we'll have on the final device. We started out with, I think it was 15 PSI. We then moved it up to about 20, then 25 PSI, 35 PSI, but around about 45 PSI, things went horribly wrong. So we decided the bottle could take about 35 pounds per square inch safely. Oh yeah, and then we strapped six of the buggers onto a homemade go-kart and went to a drag strip. Eight days in the making. And look at those bottles, last seen gracing the office corridor, now adding curvy sex appeal to the racetrack. Even the tarmac's got goosebumps. Here it is! We've gone for a, a cross configuration uh, or a kind of crucifix, if you like. The reason for that is that the thing that we found very difficult at the beginning was, was knowing exactly where to mount the water bottles because six of these things is extremely heavy. I think we've got it right. I'm about to find out, I guess. It's all very low to the ground as well, you see, because hopefully this low centre of gravity should help with the uh, pretty poor steering mechanism that we've got and should help to stabilise what is a very unstable propulsion system. This, the, though, is the piece of resistance the lever by which I release the power. OK, I throw that thing forward and my six valves open up. Come and have a look at these. Simple hinges with a washer uh, made out of simple foam bedding material. You whack that in there, lock it in place, and the lever at the front finally releases it. Also, check out the wheels. Casters from shopping trolleys. They've got a very coarse rubber and they've got very good bearings. So, just a few days' work and a lot of help from a couple of friends with the GCSE in engineering, and I've got myself a water-powered dragster. I will stop at nothing. The planning's been meticulous. Now, my moment has come. Like a top F1 driver, I know every critical nut, bolt and gleaming surface. I'm ready to go. The history books are waiting. OK, guys, I'm going to get on, and then I want you to pressurise it. As soon as the pressure's ready, I'll give you a thumbs up, and we get this party on. All right, pressurise, guys. If we don't get enough air pressure in those water coolers, this baby ain't going nowhere. OK, 22. We're losing pressure. We're gonna blow! We're gonna blow! Woo! <laughs> I absorbed all of it in my socks. My shoes. My shoes just filled with water. Eight days. <laughs> just to wear my socks at high pressure. So, not quite the result we'd hoped for. The washers, which were meant to be keeping the bottles airtight as the pressure rose, were failing. Oh, look, we've got, we've got a malfunction. Which meant we couldn't get enough power. However, we thought we had the solution. We're going to try a slightly thinner one in addition to the original so that we've got a thicker washer. And that should give me an opportunity to pressurise those tanks to the point we need. 
some final tweaks. A spot of lubrication, and we're off. Pressure, go! 10 PSI. We're at 15, I can feel the pressure buckling. 20 PSI, we're holding, it's holding, the lube's holding, Tim. 20, 25! Which could be the one? Almost up 30, it's creeping up. Stay back, team. Three. Yes! That was brilliant! 33 PSI! Hey, a couple of watches, a bit of lube! That's what you needed! Woo! Woo! I conduct some extreme nighttime testing to find the world's best torch. Susie celebrates the gadget that can actually... There's no gear shifting. It's simply forward and reverse. Wow, this does have some great acceleration. 